ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be reviewing AMD's RX 470 graphics card. Okay, so here it is, the AMD RX 470. Now this particular one here is a Gigabyte G1 gaming version, has 4 gigabytes RAM. This just may be the king for bang for buck 1080p gaming or even 1440p gaming. Something like this, a Gigabyte G1 gaming model, will probably set you back about 220 US. Currently in Australia, they're going for around $400. Um, a bit of inflation there due to it being a new product and just supply and demand, I guess. That has nothing to do with AMD, this pricing. This is just Australia. Just <laughs> If you live in Australia, you know how much you get ripped off. But that has nothing to do with AMD. So I eventually expect these to be around $350 Australian or maybe a little bit less. This comes with 4 gigabytes GDDDR memory, has 120 watt TDP, it has 32 compute units and 248 stream processors and has a clock speed of up to 1200 megahertz. Now this is the Polaris 10 series, the same as the RX 480 and this particular gigabyte G1 gaming model is clocked slightly faster at around 20 megahertz faster so it's not a big overclock out of the box but with this cooler you can get a bit of overclocking out of it so amd say this is a great card for 1080 gaming and it does that no problems but it actually is a bit better than that it actually will gain at pretty high settings at 1440p as well we'll get to the benchmarks later but i'm really impressed with the performance of this and sub 200 dollars us you're not going to get a better card i don't think and yes the rx 480 is faster but it also costs more so this is in the sweet spot it's a really good value and it can do 1440 gaming and 1080p just kills that, no problems. So this is Gigabyte's G1 gaming model. You have the Windforce fans there. They're very quiet and they're really good at cooling. If you can actually see inside there, you'll see that it has copper pipe in there. So no expense has been spared on the cooling of this card. And that's why it costs a bit more than the reference model. Obviously, you get this Windforce cooling and you get this copper and copper is expensive so also on the top you have an 8 pin power connector there to give you extra stability and overclocking ability the reference model only comes with six pins so that's another thing you get over the reference model there it has rgb lighting on the top here this gigabyte and you can you know do all the colors of the rainbow with that and you can make it breathe or blink and all those sort of fancy things if that's your go. And also on the other side you have an aluminium backing plate. So even though it's a bit more expensive than the reference model, quality components have gone into this and you, you can see where the extra money has gone and it really is worth spending that little bit extra to get a model that is great at cooling such as this. It's not overly big, it's about the same size as the um, RX 480 there, if you can see. It can easily hide that there. Um, pretty much the same size, so there's no real difference in size between the 480 reference model and the 470 G1 gaming model there. Although the 470 G1 gaming model does feel heavier, and that's because of that copper and aluminium back plate. And with this um, RX 480, you only have a six pin connector there. So that's the differences. So I own this G1 Gaming's 470 model here. You have HDMI 2.0, so that can do 60 hertz 4K monitor there. And you ha also have three 1.4 capable display ports and a legacy DVI port there. So it's well equipped with ports, this particular model here. Beefy, it looks nice, but I guess you guys wanna know how it performs. So let's get into the benchmarks. Now, as far as Vulkan and DX12 go, there's not that many native DX12 games out there. There's not that many games that support Vulkan at the moment. I'll wait a little bit until drivers mature and there are more native DX12 titles out and so on. But at the moment, it's looking promising for Vulkan and DX12. It actually starts to perform better when you compare it to, say, NVIDIA cards. 
in DX12 and Vulcan, but I'd like to revisit that when they have more DX12 titles out and games that support Vulcan as well. Just on the benchmarks, you will see this will kill anything at 1080p. So GTA 5, 1080p, ultra settings, 78 frames per second. Absolutely wrecks that. And that's only 4 frames per second slower than the RX 480, which I'll be reviewing soon, so make sure you subscribe to see that. On GTA 5, high settings, 1440p, you're getting 65 frames per second. So as you can see here, not only does this absolutely smash 1080p gaming, so this card can game at 1440p, over 60 frames per second on high settings GTA 5. So it actually performs very good at 1440p. That's 65 frames at high settings GTA 5 is certainly more than playable and just for a laugh I thought I'd test it at 4k and at GTA 5 high settings 4k 41 frames per second so that's really good for me 41 frames per second is very playable and to think that this graphics card under 200 US able to play GTA 5 at 4k high settings what more can you ask for moving on to crisis at 1080p, very high settings, you get around 58 frames per second I was getting. So virtually 60 frames per second there. Being able to play Crisis at very high settings, 1080p. So that's very respectable. And on high settings, Crisis 3, I was getting 84 frames per second. And also on Crisis 3, 1440, medium settings you could get around 54 frames per second. I would say not only is this a 1080p card, I would say definitely it's a 1440p card as well. So this is more than capable of playing 1440p games and absolutely smashes 1080p games. So after this review, I'll put up a video of this running the GTA 5 benchmark in its entirety and you can watch it run through the whole benchmark if you're interested in seeing that. And on Unigen Heaven, I was able to get 49.9, virtually 50 frames per second on this and a score of 1,257 at 1440p default settings. Now I also use this card to video edit my review of the AMD RX 460 and if you want to see that review check out the card here above and I had no problem editing that video with this graphics card even though it doesn't have CUDA cores and Premiere likes CUDA cores to be honest with that sort of video that I made I could tell no difference and this was able to edit that sort of video playback was fine and the render times were pretty much what I expected so it's great for video editing too so basically if you want to absolutely smash 1080p games and play at medium to high settings on 1440p games this is the card for you it's the best bang for buck sub $200 there's nothing that can really touch this at this very point now the pricing it's a little bit strange. I thought it would be a little bit cheaper than what it was, even though 180 is a great price and it's great bang for buck. It's not that much more to buy an RX 480. It's really interesting that the prices are so close. But if you just want to smash 1080p, 1440 games, and you don't want to spend more than $200 US, this is the card for you. And this particular one, this Gigabyte G1 Gaming, is actually really good. I, I, I would definitely recommend this model here has great calling it's very silent and you can get a bit out of it in overclocking it's not like you can overclock it by 10 percent you'll only get you know your five percent extra but there you have it that's my review of the amd rx 470 definitely i recommend this is the bang for buck graphics card for 1080 and 1440p gaming I will have a review of the RX 480 coming out, so make sure you subscribe to see that, and I will be comparing the whole 400 series. Again, I'd really like to thank you guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up, that'd be great. And until next time, guys, tally ho.
さささんさんてらさんシャイハイサイのスマイル